it's Christmas in Cork and most people are getting ready for the festive season. However, for some, it's a totally different story. Over 200 people are sleeping rough in the city. But there's one shining light, Penny Dinner's Soup Kitchen. And Penny Dinner's have set John and Francis Brennan a Christmas challenge. What's going on in here now? They're going to have to use their hospitality expertise like never before. One soup for table six. They're screaming out here at the earth. Their mission is to renovate Penny Dinner's premises, which serves 1,800 dinners a week to some of the most vulnerable members of our society. Without this, there'll be a lot of hungry people in Cork. The whole building is in a shocking state and in urgent need of repair. You couldn't work with this. The Brennans have just three weeks to rally the support of the entire community. Every time you take off something, you don't know what you're going to find. What Penny Dinner's needs is truly a miracle before Christmas. You promised me that yesterday. I'm a nervous wreck now. Look. What do you think of that building now? A good bit of work to be done here. Very awkward to get stuff in and out. Mm, a little small door, it. look. Yeah. If Penny Dinner does one thing when you come in here to volunteer, it does make you appreciate what you do have in life. It would be extremely hard for me to survive if Penny Dinner was in there. For whatever reason anybody is in here, they're here because they need to be here and they need food. I didn't want to actually turn up here at one time, but I swallowed my pride and said it was more important to myself that I have nourishing food every day. It would be in a seriously bad way without Penny Dinners, you know, in Cork. Penny Dinners is a much-loved Cork institution and every day receives generous food donations. The sandwiches came from our parish where we had a do for our curate last night and we ended up having far too much food and my husband suggested it. They were all saying, what are we going to do with all this food? And I said, Grand, my husband said, independent Cork Penny Dinners. And whether large or small, all donations are gratefully received. Every week I bring a large cornflakes, two pounds of butter, uh, three packs of biscuits. Of various kinds. Of... We're all looking forward to the Brennans coming, you know, it's created huge excitement. When the Brennans were mentioned first, they said, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're all very excited. I just can't wait to see what they're, what they're going to do with the place. Now, how are you? Great to be here. Oh, listen, it's wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. We're Come looking on forward in. to making Big a good welcome. job now. Thanks. Come on, Come on John. In you go. Now, here we are. Yeah. So, we've got to get a lot done here now. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a lot we need. I suppose the roof, like, that's an asbestos roof, so that'll have to go. Now, does that leak? It does, moment? yeah. It does, yeah. All big right. time. Okay. So Everyone who comes eats here. Everybody eats so here. So, how many people would you cater for here a week? We'd cater for about 1,800 every oh. week. Now, you see, I can't get my head around that at all, that you can produce 250 meals a day on a consistent basis, and it's all done by volunteers. Absolutely, and beautiful food at that as well. It's yeah. the top quality. So what about the seating? Are you happy with the way the seating and tables are? Well, 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 what I would be hoping for, because we have no access here, and it's very small tables, you know, just something similar to what we have, but about a, a foot and a half shorter, so that we can get access up the side. You know. Do you see these presses over here now? Yeah. What's in them? We have clothes because people are always looking for... A jumper or a jacket yeah, or something. Or um, a sleeping bag and stuff like that. Right. We have people that are homeless, we have people that are living in homes, and we have people that are paying mortgages as well. They would have good jobs, you know, mm -hmm. middle income and whatever, but their mortgages are quite a lot, like, you know. And I know people would say, but should they bid off more than they can chew? They didn't. They bought a home, you know, and it was a dream and they bought it. I mean, well, no, I want to gone, but... Do you want this match for the toy, is it? No, gentlemen, there we are. John and Francis want to know exactly what's needed, so they're helping out at the busy lunch service. One soup for table six. They're screaming out here at the air. I'm going to crochet you a special egg coaster oh, yeah. in, the, in the Kerry colour. What's happening here now with John is that we have a supply of fresh vegetables delivered to us this morning. Right. And you know, it's different to the restaurant where you can write up your menu in the evening. Yes. We can write up our menu until we see what comes in the door. You're yes. on their own, kind of. Exactly. Yes. So now what's going on here? So this is smoked salmon now, and we'll have that used tomorrow on a fish pie for the oh, restaurant fish pie. here. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what are all these for now? The Katrina will have a list of the homes of the people who need them, and they're delivered and out And you do in. a hamper then to them? Now we'll go and get started with the one there now. The kitchen is staffed by volunteers and all the food is donated. This lunchtime alone, 10 food boxes are going out to families in need. It's all hands on deck, but they've no vehicles, 
and have to rely on volunteers to use their own cars. The kitchen is the heart of the operation. This is where the Brennan's expertise kicks in. Now, where would you start here? When you start right there. Yeah. And oh, just and work in. And the floor, what's there with the floor? It's all the rocky road to wherever the rocky road is. But goes. I'd hate to be working on that. Look, like it's the levels. In here it has to work, or wherever the kitchen ends yeah. up, has to work for the volunteers. Out there it has to work for the clients. And that's best done with a blank sheet of paper and forget what's here at the minute, because this is, you couldn't work with this. Like you have a washing machine here in the middle of the kitchen. The greatest worry I have, John, is that roof, yeah. right? This roof is asbestos, so it's like it's not just take off a roof and walk away. That is the biggest risk in the time frame of the whole thing, because once you remove a roof, you just don't know what's going to be under it. But there's a lot of work to be done inside. Absolutely. Like there's probably new shelves and all that to go in there, the kitchen, the gas, the electrics. The is this going to be in the right place? Is the water going to be in the right place? Is the waste going to be in the right place? Are there sockets over there for the fridges? Is there tree phase where it needs to be? On top of all of that, we have to cater for 250 people every day that this place is closed. Yeah. So we have to get another premises and replicate everything that goes on in here over there. But who is this all for? Mick Reardon is a 54-year-old user of Penny Dinners. The struggles of loneliness, sickness and little money to live on have taken its toll. At the end of the day, when I pay my rent and pay my, my gas and my, my, my heating and my electricity, there's very little money left over for, for groceries. I just don't have the resources to manage on my own without the huge help that I get every week from Penny Dinners. Well, my partner, Marianne, passed in 2007 in November, and we had a, a, a beautiful little baby in October 2004, but the baby died as soon as it was born. We met by accident, actually. It was in the summer of 2000. Um, Mara's birthday is the 22nd of May, and mine is the 29th of May. And there's just seven years and seven days exactly between us, like, and it was her eighth anniversary there on the 2nd of November. Just gone, like, in eight years, and it feels like just only yesterday, so it never really goes away, you know? She's gone in heaven, oh, and she's, she's, she's pointing to me. She's an angel in heaven, and my a little baby's up there as well. So I have two angels minding me all the time. <laughs> but um, it's lonely. It's, it's, it's very... There's an awful empty space there, like, you know? <sighs> the pain never goes away, the loneliness. The empty space, you know, it never really goes. But when we go down to Penny Dinners, we feel like part of a family. And it's lovely being there, sit sitting down together like they used to long ago, like at home. Oh, it is always, there's always someone to talk to, it is lovely. That's why I like about it, because it's nice to hear another person's voice, like, you know. And it's nice to have the company and the social contact as well, you know. OK, Francis, we're going to go down to the English market first. Right. Okay. Francis is helping out on tonight's bread run with Serena, one of the regular volunteers who uses her own car to collect donations. Is this our load for today? That's the last Your market, all right. And the many days a week don't you get this? Six days a week. Yeah? So you always come at the end of the day like this, yeah? I do. I always come in, say, about 10 to 6. Yeah. Francis believes it's vital Penny Dinners gets its own vehicle for collections and deliveries. John and Francis have called in a team for the Penny Hello. Dinners makeover. Old friend of the Brennans, designer Maura Hunter is here to tackle the interiors. Maura's storage now, I was thinking, I was thinking, would we be able to get anything up there? We were thinking the same, to we could get something over people's head and make use of space to yeah. it. Pat O'Connell from Cork Crafted Furniture has come on board to make the storage units. So tell me now, what's your planning for over here? The plan for here is to take out all these units down on that side, raise the height and build sliding doors straight down the whole length of the wall. And local builder Charles Glavin, an old friend of Katrina's, 
will project manage the entire renovation from start to finish. The asbestos roof is coming off. There's a cladding going on. It's goose grey outside, white inside. The asbestos is always a big worry here because it's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. And we're worried like that if we don't get it off soon enough, we're getting more and more leaks. The build team have given the Brennans a long list of materials and skills needed to carry out the work. Francis has secured a slot on the Today Show to make an urgent appeal to the general public. Here, all right. Now, now it's, I'm happy now. Go. Go. Now you're very welcome back to the show. We're joined again by Francis Brennan. You're doing a special for Christmas. Yeah. And it's this year you've chosen Penny Dinners. We're going to give them a whole new setup, and we're looking for a bit of help. We're looking for kitchen equipment and refrigeration, particularly. We're looking for lighting, dining tables, mm -hmm. and one thing that we're really looking for is a van. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, sir. The best of luck. And great to have you back again. Yeah. Mind your head now, John. Going through there. Don't do damage. Yeah. One immediate response to the appeal was an offer of temporary premises from local businesswoman Sharon O'Sullivan. The charity needs somewhere to feed the users during the construction work. Is there three phase power here? There is, as far as I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. What's going to the floor? The power wash. The floor. Yeah, the floor. We have lots of yeah. volunteers. Don't need to cover it, no. no. And who's going to deal with no. the pigeon? He'd be Sorry. very upset when the crowd arrives. He'll be in the stew. We run that pigeon, don't you worry. The whole time we're talking of food pigeon. now. Yeah. How's the, what, what's the food situation? Well, we, we, we'll have to scale back the service because obviously we, we wouldn't have all the equipment um, here. So, okay, so that's the property we're after getting to cater for the clients for the two weeks of the build is absolutely fantastic. But it needs proper electricity, it needs hot water, it needs all the things that you need to cater for 250 people a day. So this is not an easy project, despite the fact that the place is brilliant. And before they even get the chance to move out to the temporary premises, a worrying construction problem has already arisen. We had a flooring contractor that um, kindly uh, donated a flooring, new flooring to go down throughout the dining room area and the kitchen area. But on inspection, we found that all the timber floors underneath her are just rotten. It's the old counter floor, but they would have been poured with a tar. Which means then we have a knock-on effect that the flooring company can't put down flooring on top of existing. There's only one answer. Because we have a programme set out of works, this is a major setback. We need a column, we need a column today. To lay a counter floor in this area is a big job. It's a big job in itself, so what we're hoping to do is we're going to evict Katrina this week and really just get this out, but we won't know until such time as we do inspection holes to find out what's underneath them. What we found is we have about an inch of wet concrete and then after that we have a good seven to eight inches as far as our drill bit went down and we're pulling out dry concrete. Time is a factor here, trying yeah. to get stuff out. Yeah. And we still have to get out now a week earlier than what we had planned, so we're running against the clock for to, to do that. Like. With the move happening early due to the floor problems, it's all hands on deck. It is challenging tomorrow, it's the big move. God only knows for how, how we'll get down the street. John and Francis have even called in the army. It's a big task because we have to be out of here today. The construction crew are coming in in the morning. But within the last probably two hours, the fridges are gone, most of the food products are gone. So the next big thing now is to get the dining room empty. I'm moving the benches, which will be interesting because they have to go through the kitchen, become upright, and then come out through the door. It's the first day at the temporary premises. There are no cooking facilities here, but there's still going to be 250 hungry people turning up looking for meals. A year ago, um, things were pretty um, pretty bad around Christmas, and by the time I got, um, you know, presents and everything got, um, there was nothing left. Um, I was too proud to go and ask friends for help, and so I just, you know, suffered on, and I didn't know much about penny dinners, I didn't hear about penny dinners, but if I knew it was around last year, I would have been there. Today, the Brennans have brought together representatives from local hotels, restaurants and catering colleges, who they hope will donate hot food every day during the build. 
if we could get a commitment from everybody to help in and uh, give a hand and we'll just fill in whatever dates that you have. We're lucky that Apache Pizza are here today because we don't do chips and pizza and penny dinners because we haven't the facilities and it's a huge treat and we just felt that it would help with the move as well. I come in every Monday morning. It's very pleasing when you see people going away that they're after getting, you know. And I suppose, like everything, I'm very, very looking for what I have myself. So that's why I put it back in. When the charity can, they give people warm clothes. And this year, the Brennans want to create a special shopping experience for the users. Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant, space, space. Yeah. yeah. John's found suitable premises, but will they be able to stock this in time for Christmas? We could put the mannequins up there yes. and the rails along here. We've no running around. Do you want a big around. challenge now? To fill it with clothes. Fill it with clothes yeah. and love. Yeah. <laughs> Dorothea is a mature science student at University College Cork. And to provide for her family, she's determined to graduate as a vet. Her husband, Sebastian, worked as a computer programmer and they have a 17-month-old daughter, Katrina. Five months ago, their lives dramatically changed for the worse. We were hit by a lorry on July 31st, so the car was a write-off and Sebastian suffered whiplash neck injury and he couldn't return to his work with computers. As a result, they had no money coming in, so her husband and baby had to move to cheaper accommodation an hour and a half away from Cork. To continue her studies, Dorothea had no option but to stay in the city during the week. We're on the telephone with each other constantly, like, talking, and I'm, I hum Katrina her little song when, before she goes to sleep and stuff like that, but it's, it's not the same. It's definitely not the same, so... Yeah, we really miss each other. Being away from home was not her only problem. She quickly ran out of money and ended up sleeping rough. About 6.30 in the morning, I go to Mardike Sports Arena and I do a workout there. Then my classes start at 9 until about 4.35. Then I go to the library and then I sit down and I start studying. And I study till 2. The library shuts its doors to students at 2 in the morning. It's really important for me to complete my degree and so it was a matter of finding a place to wait until the university and sports arena opened again. So this is where I came because it was quiet, it was relatively safe, I didn't see any people, and this is what I did. People don't understand the realities of homelessness. They think that the people have somehow done something to put themselves in that situation, that they're drug addicts or alcoholics or have been careless with money or what have you. But it's not. It's a situation that can happen to anybody. It's not just isolated to a certain group of people. It's a problem that every human being needs to take on board. Her situation became so bad that she had no choice but to swallow her pride and ask for help. When I came here the first time, I was sleep deprived. I hadn't slept for God knows how many weeks, as well as I didn't have a proper meal. And I didn't actually want to tell people any of this because what do you say? I mean, it's difficult to say if it weren't for places like the Penny Dinners, and a lot of people wouldn't be able to solve these problems on their own, definitely. Dorothea got good news, and with the help of the university, she was awarded student financial assistance, which enables her to stay in a hostel during the week. But for Dorothea, sleeping rough for the last three months is still very raw. It's really awful underneath in that bridge and, and that people have to um, continue to live like that is just not, it's, it's not right, basically. Because people don't understand what, what they feel like and what happens during that time that they're there alone. So. Sorry. Penny Dinners is a lifeline to hundreds of people like Dorothea. The Brennan's work here is very much needed.
Now tell us, like every good job, I presume there's loads of problems, is there? With the building of this age, yeah, John, there's, there's, yeah. we have lots of problems. Obviously, today, the big thing is the asbestos roof is coming off. All right, so okay. buried in the mines Take in it Germany. down in the sheets, is it? They cut the actual bolts, right. and then they'll take it down Slide from the sheets. Down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Asbestos really is dangerous when you start cutting know, it yes. and when yeah, it yeah. becomes dust. So, roof comes off. Yeah. We were hoping that the roof would go on tomorrow, and what's going back up there then, which will be bolted back onto the original steely beams that we have inside, will be a 40 mil fireproof insulated slab. Right. OK, um, very good. So a busy day ahead of us. Busy day ahead of us. Overnight, there's been a downpour. And with Penny Dinners building exposed to the elements, there's an almighty mess. Oh, stop it. Yeah, good morning, John. Um, as you can see, we have a swimming pool now. We got the asbestos roof off last night and the lads were cleaning it up until literally it got dark. Um, and overnight, because we have an exposed roof, we're pretty much underwater. It's now full steam ahead with the roof, which needs to be totally finished by the end of the day. But the weather still isn't helping. I've been checking my little forecast and we have rain at 10, 11, we have rain at 1. We have to have the seal today. And as we speak, here comes the rain again. Any further rain damage could hold back the project by weeks. Whilst the roof's going on, John and Francis are visiting some contacts to see if they can supply an industrial kitchen. We have the memory here. All right. So we have individual uh, shelves which will keep uh, their plates warm here and they'll serve their food out from, from here. Otherwise, then, uh, we look at the rationale. Yeah, they're, they're great. Would you make gravy on Sundays? <laughs> will, be, you can make anything the rationale. <laughs> single door and a double door fridge. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks you very much, Francis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Take care, okay. Okay. Bye for now. That's kitchen equipment in the bag. And next, Maura and John are checking on the progress of units for the dining area. Delighted with those drawings now. That gives us so much extra storage. Right. I'm going to use a kind of a sliding door. Yes. So that the storage literally behind. Literally. Yeah, everything yeah. closes off. Yeah. Very good. Back at the site, the roof is now finished, but the team have been working all weekend and it's an all-nighter due to an unforeseen problem with the walls. It's a 200-year-old building, so the walls are quite wet, so we decided to make a few phone calls and to give the lads credit, they are, this is Sunday, we're well into the night, it's wet being dark outside, and they're pretty committed to this, so to get a lot of people in on, this, on a Sunday with free time, it's been brilliant. This was never part of the plan, it was never on the schedule of the plan, but we're going to stay on schedule. Fingers crossed, we're going to stay on schedule. Francis knows Penny Dinners needs its own transport, so he's meeting David McSweeney at McCroom Motors to see if he can twist his arm. Well, open back now. We couldn't put the slice pans in the back of that now. It wouldn't That's do too you, But I can see it's going a long time anyway. What's this now? This is the Oris car. Yeah. Um, it comes in a car and also in a commercial version, which would be a van. Right. Which might suit you, maybe yeah. a small bit better. Uh, the van will look the same as this, yeah. but just with no seats in the well, back now, of it. I, I, I would say that's what they want. Francis will have to wait for a final decision from David's bosses. Penny Dinners relies on regular volunteers. Sinead first started here on work experience. I just wanted to see what it was like, see the other sides of how people live and how different it is. I was really shocked because, like, families and, like, such normal people would come in that I wouldn't expect to. It just really opened my eyes. John yeah. wants to know what motivates Katrina to do this every day. I've seen hunger and I've seen pain and despair. I've seen hurt, I've seen tears, I've seen everything that you could actually could see down to how far a person can sink in pain and I've seen that and I think it, that's what makes me get out of the bed if I know that I've done my best like to help feed people and to keep all this at bay for them. I feel that they're in a better place with their, to solve any problems they may have. And Brendan's here again with his weekly donation. Uh, just a surprise, your weekly yeah. surprise. Your weekly surprise, you're very uh, good. A small contribution. You come in every week. Good okay. man, thanks very much. Thank right. you. Thank you. Bye. It's Wednesday morning, and with just over a week to go, 
there's a lot of activity in Penny Dinners. Uh, plan of action is to get down to plywood today so that uh, we're ready for polyflooring. Finish off the rest of the dressing around the windows with the insulated slabs. And um, facing the with gutters are going on the outside because we need to try and keep things moving. I started off a small job, but it started getting progressively bigger. But look, it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. It's for the people of Cork. John's got an important meeting with CGI stores who freeze food for companies all around Ireland. They've rallied the support of their main distributors and together they're donating a much needed cold storage unit to Penny Dinners. Would this be one of the biggest freezers in the country? Yeah, we, we, besides about the largest uh, privately owned cold storage facility. How much would you store in here now? In the whole site, yeah. about 30,000 pallet positions, so it's fairly vast. Now it's warm out here. <laughs> it's a bit warm. <laughs> CGI also encourage companies to donate food to Penny Dinners. This product is absolutely perfect, but it might it's only have four or five days yeah. left. This may only have maybe three or four days. So we're able to act very quickly on this. We can do either two things, get it into the charities and get it used in the day, or in some cases we might have product that we can freeze right. and extend the shelf life. But it's great because it alleviates the problem for you. It's good for the companies, it's good for penny dinners and charities like them, and most importantly, it's good for the person on the street who can't afford food. Correct. So there's no Absolutely. losers. Absolutely, no losers. At the moment, 51-year-old John is homeless. This is one of many places where I used to sleep. Right. And they blocked off the doors. So you used to go into that square space on yes. the ground here? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, and it'd be nice and cosy at night? They blocked it off. Right. Every single night, John has to find somewhere to sleep. This is the best place. But in behind here, there could be 20 to 30 sleeping bags. We're under a shelter. This is like a hotel to us. There'd be like sardines in a can next to each other, like huddling up. We all know each other. We can trust each other. We can go to sleep. That's the best thing about it. We're still feeling the, the weather, the snow, the cold. The rain even gets in us. Free showers. <laughs> Had a free shower this morning myself. I've been homeless for at least five years, six years. I've been down in Cork for 10. It's the devil's water, or as I call it, the drink that messes me up. I had a brilliant job on a construction site. I, I was making a thousand a week, a thousand euro a week. And uh, I had a lovely house, three bedroom house, uh, four children and a lovely partner. But then everything just collapsed. I. I I hit the drink. I took the gambling, I took the drugs. My partner didn't want my children growing up with the drink and the drugs around me, so she, I came home from work one day and she was gone. I found out she was down in Cork. And that's what brought me down here to Cork. And since then, I've, I, I found her, and as she said, John, just leave me on my own. Dinners to me is, is a haven. Somewhere to come to, and you can see somebody that you know and you can talk. Good friends, good food, good people, and I am safe in here. And this place is open 365 days a year. Christmas Day, we even get presents on Christmas. There might be a, a hat or a pair of gloves, but it's a present. Some, some guys, they get nothing, but here we get something. I'm nearly crying now. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Alongside the build, the Brennans are also setting up an emergency winter clothing centre for Penny Dinners users and want people to donate brand new clothing. My goodness me, there's a mountain of work to do here. I thought this was all arranged. Yeah, we need a lot more stock now than this. It's fallen way behind schedule. We're opening on Thursday. I can't believe it. We have our work cut out for us in there anyway. There's so much to do.
The centre urgently needs donations and the Brennans get on the case. John has arranged for leaflets to be printed to reach out to the people of Cork. They look great, don't they? Lovely and colourful. Couldn't be better. Listen, we're delighted. Thanks very much indeed now. Bye-bye. Thank you. And Francis is drumming up donations from the city's major retailers. Well, what we want is practical stuff, you know, rather than we designer. Um, because it's, 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 we want wear out of it, you know what I mean? This is probably more practical. All right. It's actually for the warmth. Yeah. And the well, they're, 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 what do you call it? Cotton. The brush cotton. <laughs> they're perfect. And a, a variety of sizes. A variety of sizes, all sizes of kit for it. And it comes in a black as well. It, it comes in several colours. Yeah. All right. Well, we get a mix right. of those. All right, Declan. We leave you at that. Right, so it's lovely. Thanks very much. Pleasure to meet you. This is for Penny Dinner. We have a little uh, clothing appeal out at the moment. So if you had anything new that was in the wardrobe and you said, no, I'm never going to wear that, Play bring it in. Bring yeah. it in, yeah. Thanks very much. And we see over beyond. And thanks for all your help. Thanks. Bye. It's the last week of the build and the painters have been in all weekend. With only five days to go, Francis wants to make sure everything is in order. I like the colours straight colours away. Colours are lovely. Aren't they nice? Yeah, they're yeah, really nice, really nice. Whole fresh feel to it. Tell me now, are we on schedule? Uh, with as much as we've taken on extra work, like we've dry lined the whole ah, listen, building. The, we are, we're you're all the same builders, extra Not work. Extra uh, work. We're short flooring. Some right. re somebody read 80 square metres as 50 square metres. All right. And this into 30. I'm a 30 metre short. A 30 metre short. Something else coming instead of it. That's not coming till tomorrow morning. Right. So that's throwing everything back 24 hours. No. It's massive. Yeah, so. no, I can imagine. Yeah. Anyway, I know you. I've worked with you before and I'm quite confident it'll be a huge success. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad someone is. Meanwhile, John Brennan's busy at the temporary premises to check the food operation is running smoothly. We're on stew today, is it? We're on stew today, yeah. Great, and, and that goes um, down well, doesn't it? Yeah, that goes fabulous, like, and especially on such a cold day, like, yeah, so it's know, just yeah, the perfect yeah, yeah. thing for Perfect. For so we, we're using paper plates this week, yeah? We're using the paper plates because, yeah. like, you know, we're having the wash-up facilities. Oh, God. Pardon me. Sorry. That's very nutritious looking, isn't it? That's lovely. Now, Tony, there you go. Nice work. It's a good meal for a day that's in it. Cheers. Good man yourself. Cheers. Nice one. Lovely. And tell me now about families, because I don't seem to see any families here. A parent will come and um, the parent will take some dinners. And when the children come in from school, then there's a dinner in the home for them. The lady sent her three children to the door of Penny Dinners with a lovely note. Will you please feed them? I'm around the corner. I'm OK. I, I won't have anything. And it was heartbreaking. And we went down. We said, look, how strong are you going to be like? And how, how long are you going to last if you don't eat yourself? Why don't you come in? But she ended up bawling, crying, because she was so upset at having to... And she didn't know how to actually get the children in the door of Penny Dinners. So she thought that she'd write the note and that if we didn't feed her, that would make her you know, at less of a burden on us. Penny Dinners has become a lifeline for Philip, who sadly lost his job due to illness. So the first day you came here, how did that come about? I'm a recovering cancer patient right. from colon cancer, quite serious oh, cancer. Right. Okay. So the doctors and surgeons told me I needed to get a nourishing meal. You yes. understand me? It's part of my yes. treatment. Yeah. And that's why I come here. Excellent. Plus, I like the company. The, the social end. The social end is very important. It gives structure to my day. So would it be fair to say that the food you got here and the nutrition that you got here helped you through the whole illness? No doubt about it. It's Tuesday morning and with only four days to go, the floors are finally going down. We're waiting for glue to dry, literally. And the glue went down last night at six o'clock. I don't know how long it takes that glue to dry, but it's very slow. And we're against the clock, because we have to get stuff in here now. And unless the floor is done, we can't proceed. So, panic. No floor in the kitchen. He's stopping. Uh, oh, he, I know, stop. He told me that yesterday. He was coming, he was coming, he was coming. Santa's coming as well, and he'll get here on time. So right. the floor will be down on time. Yeah, but what, and where's the equipment going in? Like, yeah. Well, the equipment will go in towards the morning. That's the schedule down the drain. The kitchen's only going in the day before the grand opening. You've loads to do, I'll talk to you. Lovely, thank you very much. But at least there's some good news. Hello. How are you, Francis? Uh, how are you doing? Oh, hi, David. How are you? Thanks for calling. We have good news here, Francis. We will be um, able to sponsor you um, a van. Oh, great news. What one did you be able to get? Um, the same one uh, that I showed you outside the door, the uh, Auris car, uh, but just the van version of it. Oh, it'll be a fantastic surprise for Katrina. And, you know, they'll get such value out of it. It's really great. And we really, really appreciate all you've done. OK. Yeah. OK. Talk to you later. Talk to you later then. Thanks, David. Bye. 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 Transport is vital. 
Every week, Penny Dinners delivers between 80 to 100 food parcels. Sinead, will you give me some stuff for a family, right? Okay. You like peas, beans, whatever, there's sausages, there's all things like that. Yeah. So can, can you get those and we fill this up? Some people just can't get to us and um, we just take it to them. You know, we can't leave them suffer at home with no food. So we, if there's volunteers here with cars, we take it to them. Otherwise, we'll be letting them at home hungry. This morning, we're going to a woman and her child who are badly in need. It's 2015, going into 2016 next month, and it's, it's a shame that this is happening to people, and it's a shame that it's getting worse for a lot of people. There is recovery in some parts, you know, and whatever, but definitely not here on the ground. And we see it, you know, we're, we're a witness to it the whole time. And we just feel that, um, that we just have to do this now. So, it was never part of our remit, but it is now. Bring it in for your... Oh. It's often said that there are so many people in the same situation as the house that we went to now, like, that are short of food. And, um... That's harrowing, and it's painful. And when you walk away, like, you know, you would say, like, are you grateful for what you have as well? You're always grateful for what you have yourself. But it doesn't stop you from being upset then when you see people, you know, that, that are struggling. And through no fault of their own, things happen. Good morning, Francis. How are you, Tony? How are things? Absolutely fantastic. A bit of pandemonium. We have two days to go. I know. So it's all hands on deck. And what's the big worry now? Uh, the big worry now is room because we have kitchen fitting going on. Yeah. We have the lads walking on the PVC inside yeah, in the, the kitchen. Down. The floor went down last night. Furniture is starting to arrive, but it's full day assembly, back again tomorrow assembly. And then we have to start today now doing the pews and we're going to yeah. put the um, some of the soft upholstery seating on them. That's a full day's work, if not maybe a day and a half. So my chaos is only starting. Like it's two days to go and there's not even one cooker or a saucepan in the kitchen. And this is all to be fitted. And the fellas are only putting up the walls. Oh God, I don't know. I tell you, we'll be working late on Thursday night. How are you, Maura? I'm very worried about the kitchen. Don't ask. No? I can't believe they're not putting it Yeah, tomorrow. yeah. How long does it take to fit your kitchen? Uh, well, the kitchen's going in tomorrow and they're saying to me they're going to be four or five hours. But you were worried last night about the line now in this town. Which the line so, was 12 hours late, so if we were late 12 uh, hours late yeah. with the kitchen, no, no. we'd be frantic then. We'd be late. At the Emergency Clothing Centre, deliveries are flying in from all over the country. And even local school children have risen to the challenge. Are there more of these jackets some of our girls? Oh, brilliant for Michael. Look, reels. Socks, 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 socks. Now, girls, more stuff. These are youngsters now. What section are they going in? from Horsewell, Ireland. Christmas jumper. Oh, yeah, very appropriate. The shops and people of Cork have fully supported the appeal and clothes are arriving all through the night. Now, Penny Dinners is able to give the users a much-needed set of warm winter clothes for Christmas. The poor people that don't have as much as we do, they'll be delighted with everything, all right? Thank so thanks very much. Good dad, OK? So a big Thank clap down for everybody, all right? Thank you. Now there's only one day to go until the grand opening, but there's still a mountain of work to finish. Hi, Charlie. Morning, Francis. How are you? How are you this morning? Do you know, this is our last day of work. No, look at, look at the police. It is, yeah, but it's all, it's all madness under control. Well, I, I, I don't know. Now, is that freestanding? That has to be fitted that, in or anything. That's freestanding in the middle here. We have a lot to do, but we're going to be here all night if we have to, and we're going to get it finished. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to be you sitting promise down me that here yesterday. I'm a nervous wreck. What's going on in here now? That door will be closed up now no. shortly. No, uh, no covers on the presses yet? No covers on the presses. They were to be delivered last night, and they're a bit delayed delivered, out of our control. But we could have open shelving, which is way nicer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we open sorted. Plan. Open plan. The table's arrived at least. Table's arrived. So yeah. as we're getting stuff out now, we're going to start getting more table things. Yeah. I do uh, need to get this one. And what about our pews? Yeah. Our pews are all being dressed over yeah. in the temporary premises. You're right. You want more than two, Richard? They want more than two. Yesterday we finished at about half eight, nine. Tonight's going to be more 10, 11, maybe 12 ish. But we, we should get there. It'll be great. It's like a child opening a present. Tomorrow we'll see the expression on people's faces, like a tree, you know, who hasn't seen the work yet. So it's the end product where people see it, eyes light up, makes it all worthwhile. Trying to get the final rush done, you know. Trying to get in, get out as fast as we can. 
It looks pandemonium, but no, it, it looks the same two because, days ago. Well, to me, there's loads to be done. I need you in here now. We need to get this finished before the season, so I need you in here now, right now. It's got to be one of those nights, I think. Lots of small little things now which take up the most amount of time. The moment of truth, have we got gas? We have gas. The night meal. Half a two in the morning. I thought you said the two pews would fit together, but they won't. For Katrina, this all started at Christmas many years ago. I would have known about Penny Dinner since I was young. My father was the cook sergeant in Collins Barracks and um, every Christmas day he would go missing. And um, one Christmas he was very late coming home and we were very unhappy that all the children were after playing with their toys, they were after having their food and we were still waiting all day for him to come home while he was out. And we didn't know where he was. The following Christmas he came in and he woke me up and um, he said, get dressed, and he took me with him. So I went with him, and um, when we went to this place, it was like a hive of activity, and then he got me to do a few jobs, and then it was kind of serving time, and he told me that I had to go out and serve, and I said, I'm not going to do that, and he said, out you go. He said, that's your job now here, you have to do something. Everybody that's here has to do something. In no time at all, I was right into it, and I was as happy as Lar. And when we were going home, then I was asked him, could I come again the following year? So I suppose, that's kind of where it all started. Francis has a busy day ahead. Before he officially opens the new Penny Dinners, it's also opening day for the Emergency Clothing Centre. Thanks to the Brennans and the goodwill of Cork, Katrina's dream of giving Penny Dinners users a Christmas treat has come true. Now we're all set to go, which is great. I, uh, the shop looks well and I'm very pleased that it's turned out. We've got great help from everybody. Loads of stock, which is great. The cork didn't let us down. All the retailers rode in and gave us plenty of stock. All we need now is the clients and we're off. What do you think? Come on in anyway and have a look, have a look around. Something to look forward to, to put on something new on Christmas Day, like something fresh and something that hasn't been worn before. It's something special, a special feeling about that. Like. No, hold on now. now it's in grey as well. Oh, isn't it exciting? Isn't it exciting? <laughs> I know you're not a small man, as they say. So that would be fine, would you think? I think, that, I think we'll get that good back. <laughs> now we need to get you a nice scarf to go with it. Hold on now, stay there for a moment. I find buying clothes a struggle at the best of times. But I just don't have the money to actually go and treat myself to something decent. So if I want to buy clothes, something else has to suffer. What about those shorts? Like, by the looks of it, thank God for that. Yeah, thank God. That's a joke. You know, got what I needed to get, and I'm sorted now. So thank you. <laughs> oh no, oh no. The only thing is that you don't know what I've just noticed, and I didn't see it for the second. It's Rambo written on the back. Oh, how did you see I it so quick? No, no, how I did you see it so quick? Look at that. But, but you see, not even watching it. Come over and look at your dears. You're supposed to be saying. Very beautiful. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Do you think that's good? Yeah, it's looking very good. I'm thrilled it looks so well on you. Just three weeks ago, the Brennans were set the task of transforming Penny Dinner's 200-year-old building into a state-of-the-art soup kitchen. The exterior was drab and scruffy, but now the building has a brand new look with a solid roof, total repaint, new doors and windows. The old kitchen was falling apart and totally decrepit, but now it's had a complete refit. It has all new fittings and top-class industrial equipment. It's now up to standard and ready to provide 1,800 meals a week. The dining area was hugely cluttered, with no space and cupboards bursting at the seams. It's now spacious and modern, and the seating and tables have been given a complete makeover. The backyard was a total eyesore and packed with junk. Now the area's been cleaned up and they have what they've always dreamed of, a new walk-in cold storage unit. And the big moment has arrived. Francis is about to show off the new penny dinners to Katrina. Come on, oh, look at the hair, dear. you look gorgeous. Come in, come in. <laughs> now, I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to lead the way. Come on, in, in, in. 
It's incredible. <laughs> what do you think, Kevin? Isn't it marvellous? Unreal. Oh dear. Do you like the tables and chairs? Absolutely. Yeah, Maura did a great job on those, didn't she? Yeah. And you see, she put all the presses. Do you remember she had all the rubbishy presses behind? Look at that. This is, this is, oh God, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied. It's, um... I never saw you not talking before. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Um... It's so, um, it's so warm looking and, God, this is incredible. Would it bring tears to your eyes? It brings more than tears. I've kind of a tuck in my heart and I'm doing my best not to cry because I need to see the rest of it, but, um... Right now, I've, there's a tiny step there now, mind just going down, all right? Good. Now, this is your, look at your yard. Yes, I don't believe this. Isn't it brilliant? Oh. And you see, and they built in the cold room here for you, look. Oh, Craigie, that's incredible. It's like, it's so, um, I suppose, pretty. I can't find the right words. Like, it's perfect, isn't it? Turn around now and open that very important room. Oh, look at the a door. A, oh, a lovely God. door. Oh, Jesus, this is... It's stunning. Now, it's so nice now. You can't be spending all your time in there. You know oh. that, don't you? Kitchen, most important spot. Oh, my God. Now, what do you think? I'm just looking at everything, and it's, uh, it's what we've always wanted. Look at the size of our hand wash sink. We can nearly have a bath in that. Oh no, your hand wash sink is here now. Oh yeah, oh. it's here. <laughs> I was just you thought that was for the birds, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and you have your new telly. You'll be able to watch the races. <laughs> and all the... No, we live at your service. Oh yeah, it's, it's on regularly. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think it's a dream come true? Absolutely. The best no. of luck. You do great work and I'm thrilled, OK? Yeah. It's hard to take in, you know, it really is like, and I suppose if you have me crying, I'll get killed by everybody. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, um, <clears throat> it's so beautiful. Good investment and better, you know, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It couldn't be any nicer, like, you know, it's perfect, isn't it? Absolutely perfect. So, thank you. Now, here we go. Right, look. That's the keys to your new car. Oh, you're not serious. <laughs> what do you think of that? You see, there, we see you in it. We see. That's to collect the bread and all those things that you do, ABC oh. and all those people that are so good to you in the evening time. It's cold enough, so we'll go with the honours, all right, OK? Officially declaring Penny Dinner's new premises Open. Sometimes I feel like throw my hands up in the air. I know I can count on you. <laughs> this is a complete miracle. <laughs> Absolutely fabulous. It's warm, it's cozy, it's like coming home. Did everybody get a dinner? I can't imagine why anybody would think I'd be sent to lay. You're going to the last table. I didn't know what to expect when I first came in, but I was pleasantly surprised. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's spectacular. The difference is amazing. It feels like a restaurant now because of the decor, really. Blown away about it. Unreal. Beyond you know your wildest imaginations, that such a transformation could take shape in a couple of short weeks, like you know. Here we go, here we go. We're nearly on the last one. This expression I will face has been worth it for me, you know. Even my own daughters come in this evening and just to see them now to know where daddy's been for three weeks, you know. <gasps> would I do it again before you even asked me? No, <laughs> categorically, no. <laughs> come in here and it's, you know, I don't know. How do you, there's no words. There's no words for the atmosphere. And I think that's what we need people to know. Everybody. It's very emotional because there's so many people over the years put in so much effort quietly behind the scenes. I know it's, it feels as if it's gone public, you know?